What's up guys? Welcome back to another tutorial and today we're going to be creating a pretty cool planet. So we're going to be using Cinema 4D, Octane and X Particles. You don't really need X Particles for this, I'm mainly using it to get the rings that are going around the planets. But yeah, let's jump straight into this. So let's first start by downloading the textures that we need. So I use solarsystemscope.com which is a really cool place that you can find these planetary textures. They have a whole bunch of actual planetary textures but then they also have some fictional ones as well. So yeah, let's jump straight into it. Let's grab a sphere over here, give us a little bit more segments and let's create our texture for our planets. So I downloaded the Jupiter texture just because I thought it looked pretty cool. So got the Jupiter over here, we're going to throw that into the diffuse, the roughness, we're also going to create, make this a glossy material. Uh, let's add in another version of this Jupiter, throw that into the bump, and what we're doing with that is that we're trying to get these like little bits of detail over here that are just going to be taken directly from the texture. I just drop down the camera a little bit more just so it's not so prominent. Awesome. There we go, we got the base of our planet over there. We're going to add another sphere, make that a little bit bigger, give that a few more segments as well. And this time we're going to be creating a diffuse material. We're going, to, and we're going to be creating a atmosphere with this pretty easy way of doing it. All we're using is a fall off to get this effect. So let's add in fall off over here. We're just changing with this the amount of like atmosphere one. So depending on what you're looking for, you would change this accordingly. But yeah, for the purpose of this, we only really need it to be around the very outer edge. We're going to throw that into the opacity, so now you can see it just gives it this nice look around it. Let's add a um, black body emission over here, throw that into the texture, and drop that down just so that it gives a nice little glow to the planet. And let's also drop the temperature so we have a similar kind of color grade with that. Nice, that looks quite good. That's about the gist of the planet over there. Let's jump into now X particles. So we're gonna grab our emitter. Which way are we emitting from? That way. So let's put our emitter here. Maybe like here. Make it about that big. We want it to be the emission type to be a shot. And maybe 50 should be good. So at this point, it should just shoot out in that direction. Awesome, so now we're gonna create some trails and we're gonna be using XP trails to do that. We're gonna throw the emitter into the emitter field over here and now when we press play, it should do trails wherever. Nice, that looks great. Cool, but that's not what we want. We want it to rotate around. So let's go up here, add an XP rotate, make sure that it's the correct direction put it back inside the circle and now when we press play it should rotate around so I'm not gonna lie I'm no expert with X particles just yet so I'm not too sure how to do this properly but how I got to stop was I just added another uh, modifier to here I used an XP freeze modifier and what I did was I let's turn it off for now I let it play for a bit waited until I was happy with the way that it looked and then I applied it so maybe around like 100 should be good so let's go to 100 over here keyframe it on enable and before that let's turn it off so now it should go around for 100 frames and then at 100 frames it should stop uh, if you guys know a better way to do it yeah drop it in the comments we're all learning together but yeah that's pretty much what I did to get this effect so the only problem with it is that means that you kind of have to do work around that but for what i was trying to do working around it was actually you know it worked <laughs> so yeah now we want to be able to actually see our trails up here so we're going to add in a octane tag over here enable some hair so that we're able to see it and it's going to like make it like <coughs> excuse me sorry 0.3 that looks pretty decent nice Okay, now let's add a disc over here. So for the people who don't have um, X particles, 
this is what I would do to get the rings. You're gonna create a disc like that. Let's create a material, octane material. And we're gonna just create a gradient. So let's go here to octane gradients. Throw that into the diffuse. And let's just pick some colors off of here. So if you want to make it a little bit more random, you're more than welcome to. You just change these colors accordingly. It's just I was kind of going for something that kind of resembled the planets. So this is what I did. But, you know, there's no wrong way of doing it. So whatever you think feels right, do that. Cool. So we're also going to throw that into the opacity channel over here. Oh, and you're probably wondering why it's just one solid color. We just need to click radial over here and now we're going to get that. Nice. Let's add another gradient to the opacity channel over here. And we're just going to drag this in until we're happy with the way that that looks. That looks pretty decent. Let's also add a few more segments onto this just so that it's nice and smooth. We can also now put this channel, I mean this texture onto the XB trails so that it too will get the similar colors. Awesome. Okay, cool. Let's add in some rocks now. So I downloaded these textures off of Quixel Bridge. You can use whatever you want. Uh, I just thought that they did the job quite fine. So yeah, make sure that when you're importing them, your render settings are set to Octane Render because depending on what your render is, that's the material will come in based off of that render. So now it also automatically comes in as a Octane material, which saves us a lot of time. The only problem though is that the metallic is always up, so just drag the metallic down and you should be good to go. Cool, let's throw these into a cloner over here, set the mode to object and set the object to this disk. And now we have a whole bunch of rocks around it, but they are a little bit big, so let's make it like 0.1. Let's change the instance mode to multi instance. Let's maybe make it like 300, uh, 400. Yeah, that looks fun. That looks cool. Let's add a random effector. And on the Z axis, maybe give it like 10 just so that up and down is some variation, but not too much. Let's also add a scale. Let's make this one, maybe 0 0.5. 0 0.5 is good. And then just some rotation, just 360 on all of them, just so that we get a wide variety over there. Cool. So just to make our lives a little bit easier, we're just gonna cache this quick. It should only take a few seconds, just so that when we're scrubbing through, it's a little bit easier, so that we can get the rings instantly and we don't have to wait for that to load. Awesome. Cool. So let us now start building the scene a little bit. Let's go here add in an HDRI and for the HDRI I use this crab nebula HDRI that I was able to find it's pretty cool but yeah I'm sure there's a whole bunch of free ones out there if you guys are interested I just dropped the gamma down a little bit just so that our planet over here stands out a little bit more let's find a nice looking place Ooh, that's cool I don't know if it's what we're looking for but it's cool um, that should be fine. And now let's get our sun. We're gonna do an octane daylight and we're gonna enable in the octane settings over here, mix the textures so that now we're able to still get the light from the sun. We were not. Ah, there we go. We're still able to get the light from the sun, but it's not affecting the background. So. Maybe something like that. It looks very dramatic. Okay, but looking at this, I think this is a little bit too thick. Let's go over here. Something like that should work a little better, just that it makes it look a little more gaseous instead of an actual solid object. So in my final render, I added a whole 
bunch more. Ah, actually, let's just do it right here. Doesn't really matter too much. We got a little bit more time, so let's go for it. So let's add in another cloner. Make this a grid array, and maybe make it like. Also, let's change the multi instance. Let's give it like that. Should be good, and maybe like eight. That is way too much. So three was probably fine. Let's add a random effect to this scale. Let's put it at five. And with this, maybe like that. So let's. We're seeing some of these, so that when the camera comes in, there's a little bit more. Focus. So I used a wider lens just to make this look a little bigger, added some depth of field over here, so that when we're flying past these rocks it gives this planet some scale. Cool. So this looks cool but it doesn't look very atmospheric, so let's add some atmosphere. What we're going to do is we're going to add a fog volume over here, make it this, let's just drop down the voxel size but just so if we're able to work we'll bring it up again just for now it's a little bit easier make sure that it covers the camera that looks good let's go into our medium over here just drop down the density until we're able to see and that looks okay if you're just looking for like an overall i don't know sandstorm or just cloud but I think we can make it look much better if we add some noise, just so that we can add some variation to fog volume up here. So let's first make this noise a little bigger, maybe like 500. Bring down this, bring up this load clip. And maybe a little bit more contrast. That should be fine. And then you'll see if we change the voxel size, it'll make it it's a little bit easier to see from the distance. So like look at the way that it's like a the bigger we make it, the bigger the noise kind of becomes, and like the quality of that. And the smaller we go down, the more, you know, random it is. So, let's go back over here, just find a nice, there's a rock, there's a rock just so we have a foreground element to look at. Let us. That was pretty decent, but still, it's a little bit too much. I think we can also add some color to it. So, if you make this kind of like bluish, it'll give a make the scattering. I mean, you can make this any color you want. If you want to go weird, you can. That could look pretty cool. We go in for something like kind of dark, but yeah, I think for our purpose of this tutorial, something subtle like this will work quite nicely. So yeah, that's pretty much the gist of it. I think I just did a whole bunch of post-processing afterwards, just messing around, trying to get the look that I was going for. I also think I animated the sun as, as the camera goes in, so that's a little bit more dynamic. But yeah, that is pretty much the gist of this tutorial. Uh, if you guys are interested, I've got this whole project file up on my Patreon where you can download it or you, the, the way that it looks in the beginning of this video where I showed the preview of this, that's exactly how it will look as I was able to get that exact effect in all done in camera, just messing around with the camera in an imager to get a nice look to it. So yeah, if you guys are interested, you can download that uh, from my Patreon, but if not, that's completely chilled. And yeah, thank you for supporting the channel just by watching and I'll see you guys again soon. Cheers.